Ok, let's talk about brown dwarfs, unusual objects that are not really stars and are not really planets. And objects that, when it comes to astronomy, represent a relatively recent discovery. Nobody even knew these objects existed up until a few decades ago. And some of the coldest and darkest brown dwarfs were only discovered a few years back. And so this is basically as recent as it gets when it comes to astronomical discoveries. But it just so happens that these objects glow in the infrared light. They're super super bright and very easily visible. And it just so happens that NASA has a kind of a super weapon when it comes to infrared frequencies. And so because of the James Webb, various astronomical teams have now started to make a tremendous amount of discoveries about these very strange objects, with the recent one so far probably being the strangest yet. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, let's discuss brown dwarfs once again, talk about recent discoveries, talk about why this is interesting, and what the scientists are trying to learn from all of this as well. But I guess first, super quick definition. So what are they, in a nutshell? Well, according to Wikipedia, brown dwarfs are substellar objects that have more mass than the biggest gas giant, but less than the least massive main sequence star. Or basically, just to help you visualize, that's the brown dwarf. That's the least massive star, that's the largest gas giant. Ok, cool cool cool, uh, I guess that's kind of clear, but it doesn't really tell us anything about their properties, it just sort of tells us more about their mass. And that's really where the mystery is. We don't have these objects in a solar system, so we have no idea what they are, or how they are, or um, really anything about them. As a matter of fact, most of them are so difficult to see that they basically resemble tiny dots in a lot of different earlier pictures from famous observatories. But we still have some definitions and some understanding in regards to what these objects possibly are. First of all, according to the original definition, they have to have a mass of at least 13 Jupiters. And at that point, they actually start fusing one of the isotopes of hydrogen, deuterium. And this deuterium fusion then basically makes them much much hotter than a typical gas giant. And the more mass they get, the more active or the hotter they get. But then at the mass of about 50 to maybe 60 Jupiter masses, they acquire another skill. They also start burning lithium. Which basically gives them some other properties we still don't understand. And so in other words, they kind of start acting like stars, to some extent, just not very active stars. And once they get to about 80 to 85 masses, that's when they are supposed to cross into the star territory. They're supposed to start burning hydrogen. Although intriguingly, in the last few years, scientists have actually seen quite a lot of brown dwarfs that technically break a lot of these rules. They've seen brown dwarfs heavier than 80 Jupiters, or even 85 Jupiters, but they've also seen brown dwarfs much lighter than 13 masses of Jupiter. So mass by itself doesn't really define that much. With a newer definition that's slightly more accepted being basically how they're created. Unlike planets that form from planetary disks and from the idea of a kind of a coalescence of particles into larger and larger objects, it looks like brown dwarfs form similar to stars. They just kind of collapse into an object right away. Or in other words, they form as a result of a overdensity in some of the molecular clouds. Or at least that's what the scientists assume right now. Honestly, at this point, it's still a mystery, there is no clear definition, clear explanation. We just know that some objects seem to have more properties resembling other brown dwarfs, but some other objects seem to be kind of similar to planets. What's going on here? That's of course one of the bigger mysteries. But at least for now, based on observations from some of the brown dwarfs, they possibly look something like this. Actually, sort of similar to Jupiter. For example, now we're almost certain they seem to have stripes. And potentially some other dark spots that were physically detected by the Very Large Telescope when observing one of the most iconic brown dwarfs super super close to us. This is Loman 16b. And it's actually a binary system of two brown dwarfs. Very similar to one another, but somehow different. They do seem to have slightly different properties on their surface, and at the moment it's still unclear exactly what those differences are. But these are still really exciting systems, mostly because they're super close to us. Here it's actually located only 6.5 light years away from us, making this one of the closest objects to the solar system. Just a little bit farther away than Proxima Centauri. And I'm actually really hoping that in the next few months, possibly in the next few years, we'll finally get some images from the James Webb of these incredible objects. These will be some of the most exciting images of any brown dwarf produced so far. But we've discussed Loman 16 in some of the previous videos, you can find in the description, and so this is not new stuff. New stuff is coming from another study by, huh, Kevin Loman. 
the same guy who found these things. But also from this very beautiful star cluster known as IC348, located 1000 light years away from us, that's known for having a lot of unusual objects, including very small brown dwarfs. Much, much smaller and much more timid than anything else we've seen so far. And so for the past few months, Lomon and his team were basically trying to find more objects in here, specifically focusing on brown dwarfs, and using an instrument extremely good at detecting all of this. And it just so happens that they found at least three new members that seem to be very, very strange compared to previous brown dwarfs. First of all, all three were kind of hot. 1100 to 1800 Kelvin. That's basically a temperature of a typical brown dwarf, but not a temperature of a typical star or a typical planet. Definitely brown dwarfs. Because it's impossible to explain this hot temperature otherwise. I think. I mean, maybe there was a collision, but that's super rare. And for all three of them to have this, that is practically impossible. So let's assume they are brown dwarfs, hidden somewhere in this extremely beautiful cloud. Okay, just kidding. They're right here. One, two, and three. And here's what the images look like if seen by the James Webb Space Telescope. So you're not going to be able to see this with a typical telescope, but they seem to be super bright in the infrared. But intriguingly, their mass has been determined to be less than eight masses of Jupiter. That's almost half of what we expect from a typical brown dwarf. And the smallest one seems to be only three masses of Jupiter. That's never been seen before anywhere. And so that by itself currently makes absolutely no sense. These are the smallest brown dwarfs we've ever seen anywhere, and nobody knows how they formed. Although obviously there is maybe one explanation. Maybe these are planets, and the initial assumption is just incorrect. Maybe these are just very, very large Jupiter-like planets, and they're hot for some unknown reasons. Well, that's possible, but here's what the scientists discovered. If these are planets, they must have escaped from somewhere, basically from another star system. But all of the stars in this system seem to have relatively small mass. In other words, none of these stars should be capable of forming these massive objects. They just don't have enough mass in their planetary disk. Moreover, this whole cluster is also relatively young. There's just not enough time to form planets at all. And in this case, not just form them, but then also kick them out. And so planets, these are probably not. Based on the temperature, based on the mass, and the age estimates of other stars and a lot of other objects in the system, it seems to suggest these are really brown dwarfs with surprisingly small mass. Which then also, I guess, raises the next question. So their temperature has to come from burning off, I guess, deuterium. But how is it that they're able to burn deuterium at such a low mass? It means that there's maybe some mechanism we don't understand which allows certain objects to start fusion of certain atoms without really having necessary masses. Now, maybe it's because they either spin too fast or too slow, maybe it's some kind of a very powerful magnetic field, maybe it's just the fact that they're still young and have a lot of deuterium inside, or maybe we have no idea. Hopefully, future observations with the James Webb will provide certain answers. Right now, there are none. There's actually even an additional mystery. This thing is so powerful that it can even see certain atoms or certain molecules we could never see before, and in this case, it found something that seems to be strange. The analysis uncovered some very unusual hydrocarbon in two of these brown dwarfs. And currently, it's unknown what chemical this is. It just seems to be some kind of a strange organic molecule. But interestingly, it's not the first time we've seen this. Whatever this is, it's also been seen around Saturn, its moon Titan, and in a few other locations in outer space. We don't really know what it is, but it's definitely a hydrocarbon, and it seems to be unique to certain types of objects. There's really nothing else to say about this right now, because at the moment, as you can see, just question marks. But one of the reasons I wanted to bring this up is because this is how absolutely ridiculous modern telescopes have become. Like I mentioned about a decade ago, we could barely even see these objects with some of these colder, with some of these colder brown dwarfs being invisible to us, with nobody even realizing they exist. But now we can not just see them, we can physically analyze their atmospheres. And so in a separate study that came out very recently, another team was analyzing a different brown dwarf, Wise J1828, approximately 32 light years away from us, in the process discovering water, methane, ammonia, and more ammonia. Or to be more specific, different isotopes of ammonia, even calculating different ratios of those isotopes at the end. And that's super, super cool. We don't just see molecules in the atmospheres now, we can even identify specific isotopes and then use this for a lot of different techniques like, for example, dating or figuring out the age of these objects, 
or figure out their formation history. And in this case, these isotopes of ammonia provide us with a bit of that. Here, a very low content of one of the isotopes almost definitively implies that this object was formed very similar to a star, a gravitational collapse and not like a typical planet inside a cloud containing certain types of molecules. And so here, by looking at the ratios, it even becomes possible to determine what part of the cloud this object was formed in, or if this is a planet, how far away from the star it was formed as well. So I guess a kind of a geolocation system. And that's on top of the fact that this brown dwarf is super super hard to see. It's only 100 degrees Celsius in temperature, so it's barely even visible. This is what's known as a white type brown dwarf, which in optical light would resemble something like this. Very, very dark and technically magenta in color, not really brown. But that's not the point. The point is that the modern technology has gone so far now that we can analyze their atmosphere and potentially interpret their history directly. And so I think in the next two to three years, we're going to hear a lot of news about these objects because we can finally figure out what's going on here, where exactly they formed, and very likely discover a lot of really cool stuff about them that we currently cannot imagine. Here's what the initial pictures of these objects looked like, and this is essentially how we found out about their existence. So yeah, modern astronomy is definitely moving at a very, very fast pace. But until future discoveries, that's kind of all I wanted to mention. Check out previous videos on brown wars in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.